All right, so today we're gonna to put everything all together again. If you remember, so for this guy right here, if, as we went through, we found the following things. We found that we had a hole at um, 0.418. We found we had a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. We found we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, okay? We did not have any x-intercepts. We had, so x-intercept was none, and our y-intercept was none. And the other thing we figured out with this one was we had no togetherness, right? How do I know that? Because when I did this guy, I had x minus 4, and this would have been to the first power, 2x and x minus 4. This is also to the first and the first. This one went away, so we were left with 1 over 2x to the first power. That multiplicity, and that's how we tell togetherness. Togetherness tells us how it goes around the, how it acts around the vertical asymptote. So if I have a vertical asymptote right here, if my together, if my multiplicity is odd, then it has no togetherness. That means that on either side of the vertical asymptote, it goes in opposite directions. Okay? So if on this side it goes up, then on this side it would go down. Okay? Now, if the multiplicity is even, in other words, if I had a vertical asymptote here, then there is togetherness. What that means is that on either side of the vertical asymptote, then they travel together. Same direction. So if this side goes down, then the other side goes the same way, which is down. So that's the last piece of the puzzle that we have here. So here we go. We're going to put all these pieces on. We have a hole at 4 1 8. That means we have a hole right here. Okay? We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. I'm going to do these in a different color so you can see them. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, it goes right here. Now, because I know that I have this guy right here, I know that the function is gonna to act towards the horizontal asymptote at the end, so I know it's gonna travel this way. I also know that it's gonna come up to travel through this point, which means it's gonna continue up towards the vertical asymptote. Now, it has no togetherness. Because this multiplicity is odd. which means that on the other side, if on one side it's going up, the other side it's going to go down, which means it'll end up looking like this. All right, so now let's put the other one together. We had a vertical asymptote, we had none, holes at none, we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals six, and we had a y-intercept at negative three-fourths, and x-intercept we had none. I'm sorry, we did. x-intercept we had it at two of them. We had an x-intercept at, find them, negative three, or negative three halves, and one at one-third. If you'll flip over to the other side of your paper, you'll see those. So now, I don't have vertical asymptotes, so I don't need to worry about togetherness. I have no holes, don't need to worry about those. Horizontal asymptote at six. I'm going to put that on here. I have a y-intercept of negative 3 fourths, which is down here. I have one x-intercept at 1 third and one x-intercept at negative 1 and a half, which is here, negative 3 halves. I know both of these have a multiplicity of 1. 
so they cross. You remember that from last time. So this guy is going to go here and then go towards my horizontal asymptote. This is going to then come down toward through the y-intercept back up, and then it's going to go this way and cross on that guy. Okay, so that's what my graph's going to look like. Last one. We know we had a, uh, let's see, we had a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. I'm going to put that on the graph. And it had no togetherness. Now I can tell because this is to the first power, so its multiplicity is 1. We had horizontal asymptote, we had none. We had a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 1. So that gives me a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of rise over run of 1. So m is 1 over 1, b was negative 1. So rise over run puts my slant asymptote right here. I also knew that I had a y-intercept at 5, 0 0.05. So y-intercept at 5 here. And I had x-intercepts were none. So I know it sunk across the x-axis. What that means is, is that it has to come near this vertical asymptote. It will never cross the vertical asymptote, so it has to go that way which means it's going to come back down around, but not cross the x-axis and then go towards the slant asymptote. Now, the other thing we knew was no togetherness, which means if this side goes up, the other side has to go down on that asymptote. So down is here we go here, and then turns around and goes this way. Okay? So now let's work through an entire problem from beginning to end. Step one. We are going to factor. I can pull an x out. 2x squared minus x minus 1. x squared plus 2x plus 1. This guy is going to factor if we crisscross it. We're going to end up with negative 2, negative 1, which means negative 2, positive 1. If we do our slide and divide, we end up with x minus 1 and 2x plus 1 as our factors x squared plus 2x plus 1. It's going to crisscross. We get 1 and 2, so we're 1 and 1, so that is going to be x plus 1, but it's going to be quantity squared. So now, nothing cancels. So holes, we have none. Vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. That would be the factor x plus 1. Set it equal to 0 and solve. We get x minus 1, which has togetherness. You know I know it has togetherness? Because that right there is even. Even multiplicity. Y-intercept, we're going to end up with 0 minus 0 minus 0 over 0 plus 0 plus 1. So 0 over 1, which is 0. We have a y-intercept at 0. X-intercept, we're going to look at the factors in the numerator. Factors in the numerator. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, all of those, all of these guys are going to be here. So we've got x equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and 2x plus 1 equals 0. So we end up with x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals negative 1 half. Now finally, this is going to be no horizontal because this is a case 1. So no horizontal asymptote, we're going to have a slant asymptote. So we have a slant. So we're going to put this over here and do polynomial long division. 2x cubed minus x squared minus x. Out here we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So 2x cubed divided by x squared gives me 2x. So I'm going to put 2x out here. Multiply, I get 2x cubed plus 4 x squared plus 2x, and we're going to subtract, so minus, minus, minus. That's going to, this is going to go away. We're going to get negative 5x squared 
minus 3x, so we're going to go to negative 5x squared, largest, divided by x squared, we get negative 5. So this is our slant asymptote. Slant asymptote is at y equals 2x minus 5. All right, so let's put it all on the graph. Vertical asymptote at negative 1. I'm going to do those in red. Negative 1. Slant asymptote at slope of 2 over 1. Y-intercept of negative 5. So at negative 5, we're going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Okay, so there we are. Now, we're gonna move on to our y-intercept. Do these in blue, my y-intercept is at zero. I also have an x-intercept at zero. I also have one at one, and I have one at negative one-half, which is, I'm gonna zoom in here, right here. Now, here's the thing. I know that all of these have a multiplicity of one, so they all cross, don't they? Now, I'm gonna start at this one, far one because I know it has to end up going this way. So if it crosses, it then has to turn around and cross this guy, which has to turn around and cross this guy, which is going to end up going downward, not past that, lock, that vertical asymptote. But we said it has togetherness. So if that side goes down, then the other side of this asymptote also goes down. But it can't go, its end behavior has to follow this guy right here. So it's going to turn around and follow this way. Okay. Now, let's do another one together. This way, we're gonna do number 15 in your homework. So, if I do number 15 in your homework, here we go. Factor, we get x plus four. Factor this guy, we get x minus six, x plus four. And what you'll notice, is that the x plus 4 and the x plus 4 go away, which means we have a whole at x plus 4 at x equals negative 4. Now we're going to plug that back into what's left, which would be 2 over x minus 6. So we plug that back in. We get 2 over negative 4 minus 6, so negative 2 over 10, which is negative 1 fifth. So our whole is at negative 4 negative one-fifth. Now, vertical asymptotes, we have one factor left in the denominator. Multiplicity is one. So we know there is no togetherness. And it is at x minus six equals zero. So it is at x equals six. So now I'm gonna put those two things on my graph. Vertical asymptote at x equals six and a whole at negative four, negative one-fifth. So negative four, negative one-fifth is going to be very small. All right, so we're gonna put on what we know so far is we've got that vertical asymptote at six, and now let's put the whole in, which is negative four, negative one-fifth. So negative four, negative one-fifth is gonna be really close to the axis, but not actually there. So I'm gonna do this a different color. I'm gonna do this here, okay? So there's my hole right there in red. So now y-intercept, we know everything goes to 0, 0, 0, that's an x, so we're left with 8 over negative 24, which reduces to negative 1 third. So we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 1 third. We don't have any x's, no x's here, so we have no x-intercepts. So 0, negative 1 third would be here. Now, last things last, the horizontal or slant asymptote, well, we have a first degree on the top right here, right? And a second degree here. So this is a case two, which means I have y equals zero as my horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's connect the dots. We know that this thing has to cross from here. It's gonna be following the horizontal asymptote, gonna go from this to here which means that it has to continue downward. So there's one half the graph. Now we said no togetherness, so if one side goes down, the other side has to go 
up. So it goes this way. And that is my grub. Let's do the last one here. This is x minus two. This factors into x minus three, x plus one. Nothing cancels, so we have no holes. Vertical asymptotes would come from the denominator, so set x minus three equal to zero, x plus one equals zero. So we have horizontal, vertical asymptotes at three and at negative one. This is the first time we've seen two of them. So let's put one at negative one. Put the other one at three. So we're gonna have three portions to this graph. You know what, I want this a little bit fatter. I'll try it this way, you can see them a little better. Okay, so there we go. So now, let's go to the next step, which is finding my, oh, hey, we need to talk about this. Multiplicity, one and one which means there is no togetherness around either of those vertical asymptotes. Y-intercept now. So for the y-intercept, we mark out all the x's, mark out, mark out, mark out. We end up with negative two left over negative three. So positive two thirds is my y-intercept, the point zero, two thirds. Let's put that on the graph. Zero, two thirds. Puts it right there, doesn't it? Okay. X-intercepts. This has a multiplicity of one. We're gonna set, set at x minus two equals zero. So x equals two and it crosses there. So x equals two crosses here. Very cool. So you know what I know already is happening? I know it's gotta go from here and then follow that vertical asymptote. And from here, it's gonna cross and go follow that vertical asymptote. Now, next thing I need to know is my horizontal versus slant asymptote. I have first degree in the top because this is a one and it's a two here over second. So this is a case two. So y equals zero is my vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, excuse me. Horizontal asymptote goes this way. So what does that tell me? That tells me my end behavior which means that the rest of my graph, since this part goes this way, I said no togetherness. So if it's no togetherness, if this part goes down, then on the other side of that, it has to go up, which means this has to go this way and not cross the horizontal asymptote. Now, on the other side, if this side goes up, then guess what? This side has to go down, which means this side goes downward this way and doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote. So there's my graph, all right? So your assignment is to take all of these pieces, put them on the graph, and sketch your graph, okay? Sketch your graph out so you know what it looks like. If you have two asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, you're gonna have two cases of either togetherness or not together, okay? All right.